Once upon a time, three little girls went to the police academy, where they were each assigned very hazardous duties. But I took them away from all that, and now they work for me. My name is Charlie. That was the opening narration done by John Forsyth for the 1976 hit crime drama, Charlie's Angels. The show ran on ABC from September 22, 1976 to June 24, 1981. A total of five seasons and 115 episodes. The plot is pretty simple for the show. These three attractive police women are recruited into a private detective agency by a wealthy but reclusive man named Charlie Townsend. This is voiced by John Forsyth. These three detectives are called Angels, and they're given their cases by Charlie's assistant, Bosley, played by David Doyle. And sometimes they directly talk to Charlie via speakerphone to get their assignments. The Angels are Sabrina Duncan, played by Kate Jackson, Kelly Garrett, played by Jacqueline Smith, and Jill Monroe, played by Farrah Fawcett. Over the continuing seasons, the cast changed quite a bit for the Angels. Replacement characters included Jill Monroe, played by Farrah Fawcett. She was replaced in the second season by Cheryl Ladd as Chris Monroe, who was Jill's sister. Sabrina Duncan, played by Kate Jackson, was replaced in the fourth season by Shelley Hack as Tiffany Wells. Then in the next season, Tanya Roberts replaced Hack as Julie Rogers. The show got pretty mixed reviews from the critics and really had a reputation as being on the air strictly as Jiggle TV, emphasizing the sex appeal of the female leads. But despite the critics, the show enjoyed huge popularity with audiences, and was a top 10 hit in the Nielsen ratings for its first two seasons. By the third season, though, the show had fallen out of the top 10. In the fifth season, the show fell out of the top 30. The voice of Charlie, done by John Forsythe, was actually a last-minute replacement after the original actor that was scheduled to do it turned out to have a drinking problem. This actor was Gig Young. Aaron Spelling, who produced the show, called Forsyth past midnight on a Friday and begged him to come into the studio immediately, as the pilot was to be broadcast after the weekend. Forsyth ended up coming in and recording his first voiceover in his pajamas. He actually never set foot on the set of the show. His voice was recorded and dubbed in later. He told Aaron Spelling, that for him to make an appearance on the show, he would have to pay him a lot of money, so they didn't do it. You would think at some point during the show, he would actually visit the set, but he never did. He is filmed in a few of the episodes, but it's an obvious stand-in that's used, because Forsyth was never there. He was never credited for this role in the entire series. Forsyth thought that it would add more mystery to the show, I think that did add a bit of mystique and mystery to the show, but his voice is so distinct and memorable that most people knew who it was. They went through a lot of writers on the show because the stars were really hard to please and they were really demanding on getting better scripts. They felt like some of the script quality was really poor. The series was originally going to be called Alley Cats, but it's pretty unclear why exactly it got changed, but it's probably good it did. Some say it was a suggestion by Kate Jackson to give it the Charlie's Angels name. It's said that she was in Aaron Spelling's office and saw a picture of an angel, and it just popped in her head that that should be the name for the show. After she came up with this name, she had a feeling that she kind of owned the show. Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner were silent investors in this show. They were investors who were not listed as producers in the credits. Wagner and Wood's business arrangement with Aaron Spelling became apparent when they sued the famous Spelling for misappropriation of funds. They had claimed that money that they had given him for the series had been used for other television shows. 
The press ended up calling this scandal Angel Gate, and the president that inherited the White House after Richard Nixon resigned loved the show so much that he visited the set on one occasion. That president was Gerald Ford. Charlie's Angels was generally formatted in the way of a procedural drama, much like the vast majority of other crime shows of that era were done. Many of the episodes follow a regular structure whereby a crime is done and then the angels are given the case and the details of it. And then they end up going undercover to solve the case. The final scene usually takes place back at Townsend's office with Charlie offering his congratulations for the well-done job that they did. In the initial concepts of the show, Sabrina Duncan, Jill Monroe, and Kelly Garrett have graduated from the police academy in Los Angeles. Despite them proving that they were entirely capable during their training, all three have been subsequently assigned to be meter maids, office workers, and crossing guards. Being dissatisfied with these jobs, they are recruited to work for the Charles Townsend Agency as private investigators. Most of this is explained in the opening credit sequence. Neither the pilot film nor subsequent series ever actually depicted an original story as they are seen to have been working as investigators for some time as they start the pilot. Cheryl Ladd said in an interview that she was forced to wear bikinis and crop tops more than the other actresses were because the producer, Aaron Spelling, thought she had the cutest belly button in the history of belly buttons. She complained about this, but he didn't care. He continued to insist. So in a 1978 episode called Angel on High, she wore the tiniest bikini she could find, knowing the network wouldn't allow it because she was almost naked. The director didn't know anything about this, so when she dropped the robe, he just gasped. And he told her, Cheryl, we can't film you in a bathing suit like that. She insisted that Aaron wanted this and that she was going to film it this way, that the scene had to be shot this way, that she wasn't going to change. They went ahead and shot the scene that way, and when Spelling saw it, he got terribly upset. But he also got the message that she was trying to send him, for him to stop making her wear those skimpy outfits all the time. Now, it was originally thought that Kate Jackson was supposed to be the real star of the show and the center of attention. What happened, though, is Farrah Fawcett overtook her popularity. And this created a lot of tension on the set. Kate Jackson created a very toxic work environment by most accounts behind the scenes. All of this led to her being fired. She wasn't told about this firing until after her very last scenes were filmed and her character states, next year will be the best year ever. This is obviously an inside joke that was done at her expense by the production company. They were fed up with her annex. They just felt like she wasn't worth the trouble and decided to get rid of her. Aaron Spelling actually issued a statement stating, due to problems on the set, Kate is being dropped for the good of the show. Even after this was done, Kate Jackson's husband stated in an interview that she wasn't fired, that she had quit. In the 1970s, the amount of sex on television increased, as did the ratings of this show, creating a lot of social controversies. And that's what caused the critics to believe that this TV series had no intelligence or substance. And all of that may be true, but it sure was a blast to watch it. Take a look back at Charlie's Angels. I guarantee you'll leave watching the show with a smile on your face. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.